Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a little bit different, a little bit more fun. Um, I'm going to be talking about what I'm giving my students for Valentine's Day. Um, Valentine's Day is literally next week, so I feel like I'm a little behind, but you know what? They're getting done. It's still on time. It's good to go. So I want to show you guys what I'm doing for them in case you still have to get your kids Valentine's or students Valentine's. Maybe you can use some of these ideas. <laughs> So today, um, we are going to be making these super cute little Valentine's bags I have for them. They're super easy. They are relatively a good price. It was really hard for me to find things I wasn't going to spend a fortune on because I have 21 students and so it was like such an awkward number. I either had to buy two or three or sometimes even four like boxes of Valentine's or other things just to get the 21. So I was like, okay, what can I do so I don't spend all of these? <laughs> um, and so the first thing I'm gonna show you guys is these little food tags. They're super cute. So they just have a to and from, if it will ever load, there we go. So it just has a to and from on there. Um, I do go by my first name because I'm changing my last name in June because I'm getting married, fun fact. Um, anyways, it just says, Sweet, it's Valentine's Day. It has a little popcorn on it. They also have the pizza ones, milkshake, hamburger, um, donuts. Oh wait, did I say this is a hamburger? This is a hot dog. This is a hamburger. I don't know what I showed before. My favorite one is these cute little milk jugs to die for. Um, they have cake ones, popsicles, and french fries so i got these all in one box which is great off of amazon they're just called valentine's um they're really hard to find on amazon so i'm going to attach the direct link below because i used these last year and even i spent quite a lot of time looking for these again for this year last year i just put a sucker on them um but my mentor teacher is giving them suckers, so I also don't want to give them suckers. So that's why I kind of switched to doing the little goodie bag. So now I'm going to show you what's inside of this little tiny bag. It's not much, but it's something. So I got these clear bags also off of Amazon. I will link below. These, I believe, were only $4. And these, I think, were like 7 or $8. Um, so... Right now we're at like 10 to $11 that I spent, um, eight, no, 12. I'm, I've taught so much math this week. I am so brain dead. I can count, I promise. I passed my praxis. <laughs> but, um, so we're about $12 that I spent for those. Um, and then in this little guy, it's just a little pencil from Target. So they come in a package that looks like these. They're just like the fun pencils that like you pull out and there's like more and you like put this in the bottom. We had these growing up so I had kids. I guess most of us have, maybe you didn't, but I did. Um, they're super cool, kids love them, they're great. One package was $3, so I, there's 16 per package, so again, I had to buy two. Super annoying, but it's fine. And then, so, that was $6, so now we're at $18 that I've spent. I have 21 students, so I got I went just over a dollar a kid um, because the next thing I bought was this child's play candy. Um, this huge bag that I got was only $7, and I had a discount for it only being $5 for, does it say how many pounds? Four pounds of candy which was huge. So if you don't have the discount, then I think it's just gonna be like seven or eight dollars, which still is not bad for the amount of candy you get. And so yeah, so I spent around 15, six, 25 to $26 on this whole Valentine's, which really isn't bad. I try to keep it about a dollar per kid, but I couldn't. And the stuff I could spend a dollar on, like again, was not, 
I don't want to say boring because I don't want to be like if you use those you're boring but like for me I love being creative and I love giving like giving is where my passion is I love to give and so just giving someone a like tootsie roll like it just doesn't go for me <laughs> so that's why I do this but basically it's pretty simple they're really fast to fill the only thing is i try and keep around the kind of same candy i put in each or like at least the amount because these kids will count and will yell at me if they're not the same and i just don't feel like dealing with that on a tuesday on valentine's so i've been putting two of the large tootsie rolls in two of like the chocolates so twix whatever two chocolates they can fight over that and then one of the like fruit chews and I'm not putting suckers in these because that is like their favorite thing and I do not have 21 suckers in that package. And so I'm just not putting suckers in any of them. And then I put the pencil, oh no, I lost his top. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I avoid conflict as much as possible. And so I just put it in this little bag and then it comes with the twisties already, like little golden, golden twisties. Um, looks like this. It's gonna be a really long video of me just standing here, but it's how I make Valentine's. So here's that. And I twist it, and I twist it, and then I take one of these guys. Um, I write who it's to, who it's from. Obviously, from Miss Kaylee to I put their name, which I'm not gonna show you guys. Um, and then I just hole punch the top and I feed the hole punch through the little twisty. And that's how I make them. So they're very easy to make. They're very simple. They're relatively cheap. You could definitely get them cheaper. You could definitely go more expensive. Um, if I didn't have as many kids, I would definitely fill the bags with more candy. But since I have many kids, um, I'm not buying another bag. So they can just deal with the four to five pieces of candy in their bags. Because they should be grateful. Which my... I don't know. I want you guys to comment if you're in a classroom right now. Does it seem like your kids aren't as grateful as they should have been, as they should be, or as like previous years? Um, it's like the whole fourth grade. So it's not just my class, but the whole fourth grade has this issue with kids like just not like caring or like being kind or like they're like mm, whatever like. It's just so weird. Um, and my mentor teacher said that she's never had this problem before. And so we we're trying to figure out like why this group of kids. I don't really know, but it is kind of weird to deal with. Um, but I will update you guys on how student teaching is now, since it's been a little bit since I talked to you. Um, so I do have really exciting news. One, I had my first observation. One, I had my first observation on Monday. It went relatively good. Um, the kids were super talkative and because it was a recording, so we're allowed to record one and then do two in persons. And so I chose my first one to be recorded just so I can kind of get my nerves out of the way and just get it over with because they wanted it done like really soon. And so I think because she wasn't actively in the room watching that they felt like they didn't need to be super good or well behaved. And so they act as they normally do, which is they talk and it's really fun to deal with and so a lot of it is just me redirecting their conversations and making sure they're talking when they're supposed to which was good because my mentor teacher said that I did good delivering they just weren't responding so she wants me to try different or new ways to do it um I've tried many ways so I'll try her ways and I'll kind of show her like it's just this group of kids so like that was kind of sad that I got docked points um for them being off task but we'll see how the next one goes with her being inside the classroom another thing that i was telling you guys um this is that she basically said that no one will ever be proficient their first observation because if you're proficient that means you don't have to student teach so they pretty much will be like this observation was like the harshest critic that she said that I'll ever get because they have to keep us in student teaching and keep us growing. So I am very much a straight A kind of person. Like I, if I work really hard and I get a 95 on assignment, like I take that 
like to heart, like it drives me nuts. Um, and so that's just who I am. I haven't always been that way, fun fact. Um, high school, I was really bad. I was on my shirt. High school, I was really bad. Um, don't even get me there. But now in college, definitely a straight student, definitely like hundreds and anything less than a hundred, I don't like. And so I told her that and I was like, yeah, like I like, like just hearing this is really hard for me, even though I know that it's because I have to grow. I know, I know, I know it's just hard to hear um, that I wasn't perfection on everything, which again, it's my first observation. This was my first week of teaching full time. And I'm the only one in my group that is actively teaching all lessons right now at this point. So I'm completely ahead of the game. So I have to keep that in mind, but still really hard. So just know on your first observation, they're going to be hard and they're going to be tough. And if maybe your supervisor is not going to tell you the reason why like mine did. So hear it from me. It's because they have to keep you in student teaching and keep you growing or quote that they have to show that you grow, whether you really grew or not, they have to show it. So take that information with what you will. Um, but the good news, my vice principal came and observed my mentor teacher when she was doing a small group in math. And during that time, I also have a small group in math in the same classroom. So while she was observing her, she was also watching me teach, uh, which I kind of like, felt like she was going to do. Um, and she wrote me an email afterwards, basically like praising my teaching, praising my small group, um, saying I did like an amazing job and that she really wants me wants to come in and watch me teach a reading or writing lesson since she knows I can teach math. She wants me to teach that. So they're actually going to come in on the 23rd, both, both my principal and vice principal on the 23rd to come watch me teach. And then on the 27th, they list their job. I like getting goosebumps just telling you guys this. They list their job, like jobs. So potentially in March, I could have my first interview with the school that I'm at. Cause they legally still have to like give me the formal, like literally you guys have goosebumps. They had to give me the formal interview. Um, so I will have to go through that, but that means I also have to get my resume set, they said by the 27th. So I'll show you guys that too in another video of how I'm getting ready and prepared for all of that, but it's a lot sooner and a lot quicker than I ever thought. Um, people told me May, and so I'm like, oh, I have until May. No, I have until the 23rd to like get good at teaching, and then I have until the 27th to get my resume good, and then potentially the first or second week of March have my teacher portfolio and everything I need for the interview ready. Ah, crazy, but that's a wrap, but it's all exciting stuff. Stressful, but exciting. So. Let me know if you guys have any questions or any updates on your student teaching. I know a lot of you guys have been messaging me or commenting that you're currently in a classroom. So I want to hear how it's going for you guys. Do you guys need any tips or other tricks or want to see anything? Let me know. Hit that subscribe button to follow my journey all along my teaching journey as we go into the interviews, more observations and studying at my first classroom and dealing with capstone. And I also have a wedding on top of all this. So if any of you guys want to see wedding stuff, let me know because I have like five Kaylees happening right now and they're all running around and it's all hectic, but good things, <laughs> all good things. Hopefully you found this video a little bit useful. I'm gonna show you guys what I'm wearing for Valentine's Day and our party and stuff and it'll be a fun little vlog. So look forward to that and I'll see you guys later. Bye.